Hi, this is Reverd Audio, and today we are going on a, on a really fantastic journey. We are going to Texas, and uh, Davis wrote a really fantastic idea that they uh, planned a really uh, fun thought experiment with Nick uh, about blue tech and uh, what would happen if if we would submerge the deck in it and uh, and and just really basically coat the the surface of the deck of all the metallic parts with blue tech and uh, i would say this is like a really uh, amazing experiment and 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 that's what i really like to see that uh, you you have ideas and and you try to think about it do thought experiments this this is how we can uh, find out new things and uh, and and their idea was that uh, organic materials may have better sound qualities and and has any research been done regarding electronics in organic materials and uh, i would say yes and no and um however i i give you my ideas and uh and I think, uh, so what I have uh, f figured out is that uh, when we add blue tech, um, th 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 the idea came, actually Davis's idea came from, from uh, my uh, PS audio deck where I was putting uh, blue tech on top of uh, some of the uh, ICs to dampen the, uh, the resonances. And, and you can take it further and basically their thought experiment was to basically apply blue tech on every surface area uh, as what happens in in your chassis everywhere in a deck and but even cd player amplifier um, especially loudspeaker is that there are vibrations always present and if you have a material that picks up and uh, conducts vibrations then essentially those vibrations will end up showing up on your signal and even though the level of those vibrations is really minute really really tiny but it's big enough that it will show up in the sound of an audio system and especially for decks for cd players uh, it will show up to a, a really surprisingly high level and, and that's why if you use different feet for your CD players or decks, you can tune and change the sound quite a bit. And uh, that's and, and, and this tuning and changing of the sound, if uh, the cabinet is made of flimsier metal, uh, it will react to it better. But of course, sadly, um, if it's made of a really flimsy material, then usually the contents inside the deck are flimsy as well. So... Uh, you will not hear much improvement because the electronics doesn't let you hear it. But if you have a high quality electronics, then changes in the vibration modes of the chassis will really contribute a lot to the sound in general. So was there any experimentation done? Uh, I cannot cite any research papers or anyone doing uh, something like that probably there were people so i'm just going to show or, or talk about my own experience what i did with my mentors too uh, is that uh, so actually i was doing this on my micro mega stage 3 cd player uh, why this was about 15 years ago and i just tried adding ic's into the i i mean blue tech onto the ic's of the uh, micro mega and then add, added blue tech onto the uh, PCBs, onto the circuit boards, and then basically I added uh, something like a, a pound or two pounds of blue tech on the inside of the chassis as well. So it ended up like a, like like a two pounds of blue tech on it. Um, so I kind of uh, went halfway to your thought experiment, and it didn't look like an alien uh, uh, blue. Uh, blue puffer fish uh, deck technology but was kind of halfway towards there and then to my surprise initially when I started adding the blue tech onto a few of the ICs a little bit on the PCBs a little bit on the chassis the sound was cleaner and cleaner and uh, it removed more and more of the 
mechanical aspect of the sound. But when I just went overboard with it and I just over the uh, the uh, player with blue tag, the sound went dead. So all the sparkle, all the life, uh, the dynamics, uh, the the high frequency extension, uh, it, it just went dead. So it's it's really really peculiar because we would not expect expect that, correct? We would think that uh, if 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 everything is totally inert and resonance free, then we would think that that would give us the best sound. But curiously, it it wasn't like that. So so what I have noticed is that basically, uh, to have the best effect, uh, we need to look for uh, something else other than blue tech. And yes, Davis, you are totally correct with Nick. It has to be organic matter. And that organic matter is wood. Uh, because uh, what the blue tech does that it absorbs the resonance and turns it into heat, into basically into mechanical energy. But also it uh, doesn't turn everything to energy. It, it, uh, it also creates an aperiodic resonance. So not every resonance will be killed when, you, when we apply blue tech. Uh, but I would say the high frequency modes of the resonances will certainly be removed, but uh, we will add the low frequency aperiodic smear to the behavior of the chassis, and that kind of like uh, shows up as a smearing in the sound as well, and, and, and like a lack of life. But when we add wood, uh, what wood does is that it distributes the resonances, and then keeps them over a wide frequency range, and 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 I think that's uh, that's something truly critical, because actually when we try to dampen resonances, we can never ever get totally rid of resonances. What we can choose is either uh, use uh, substances like blue tech or um, green glue or some other tacky substance and that will cut down the resonance level with many many dBs but will leave us uh, really nasty leftovers. Low level though, but if your system is uh, revealing enough, especially with the uh, high efficiency or ultra efficiency loudspeakers, it is easily audible. The other path is using wood and uh, wood does not dampen resonances that much but it will prevent uh, the crop up of those resonances which are created by, by metallic resonances. So if we bond wood to a, a metal chassis, then uh, basically its, its resonance will be much more steered towards a, a wooden resonance. And I think I have not shown the underside of my PS Audio deck, and I'm a little bit, a little bit sorry about that, but I changed the feet of the deck and it used to have these plastic feet which is kind of a really soft plastic feet which is a rudimentary version of blue tech. So it goes like half the way as, as blue tech goes because it's like soft and squishy and blue tech just takes that soft and squishiness to the next level. So I just get rid of those soft and squishy legs and uh, use the hot glue to glue on uh, wooden pieces, actually uh, pieces of ebony. And, and those three pieces of ebony, plus on the inside that I've shown, uh, I used uh, blocks of uh, other kinds of softer woods, and uh, I bonded them with uh, hot glue. And with those, now the resonances of the chassis were completely transformed in, into a wooden sound. So basically, instead of uh, high frequency, uh, sharp resonances, now I have a wide band, uh, a woody uh, addition to the sound. And, and whatever material we use, uh, the qualities of that material will show up in the sonic quality just because uh, just as much uh, the way the wood resonates, uh, those resonances will be also uh, picked up into the sonic character because it's going to be uh, translated into an electromagnetic effect as the chassis resonating and uh, inducing electricity. 
inside the parts of the preamp. So now let me just uh, tone down my talking a bit and show you uh, some really mind-blowing stuff. And uh, this is the website for, uh, for a company. They are called Abbas Audio. And uh, Larry from Real Hi-Fi have uh, talked about this Russian company. I never knew they exist before. And then I just followed up on it based on Larry's advice. And they are just absolutely mind-blowing. I can, I can tell you guys that uh, this is where your thought experiment uh, will lead. And, uh, and, and look at that. So what they are doing, look at the deck. So that is their deck. And what they are doing, you see, they are using a full wooden chassis. And that's, I think that's also part of their deck. I think those are the power supplies for the high voltage of the deck. Just nice big wooden chassis. And, and it totally looks like an antique radio from the 1920s. And I think that's where they got the idea. And, uh, and actually I, I got the same idea from the old antique uh, tube radios. And when you listen to them, they just have an astonishingly natural tone that is just uh, completely non-existent in the modern uh, hi-fi world. And, uh, and they reached up for that and, and amazingly they put their decks into like a multi-chassis uh, wooden cabinet and that really prevents those uh, mechanical vibrations uh, to be transmitted into the sensitive digital circuitry. And look, look here, what else they did, they went even further. And as you see, look, this is not a, a printed circuit board. This is a Teflon board, what they are doing, and it doesn't have traces on it. They use point to point wiring. Now, how crazy that is, right? Point to point wire deck. And I have to tell you, they are not the only ones who do that. Uh, Lou also built his deck uh, that way, in Teflon board and point-to-point and -point, uh, silver wiring. And this is by far superior than using those junk PCBs which resonate like crap. Uh, Teflon is much more inert, m much less uh, conductive of these uh, uh, spurious uh, resonances. Um, so basically it's kind of like uh, removing a broken muffler from your car and then just putting on some uh, some nice uh, board where the parts don't resonate the heck away. Uh, so this is where our experiment would lead us. And here what I would add to this. Oh, look more. The wiring, they are done. I, I, I was doing my wiring uh, the same way that they are doing. You see, they put their wires into a hose. I think that look, looks like either a, a transparent Teflon or polyethylene hose. Uh, they use it for insulation and, and spacing. And uh, that's, that's a pretty neat thing to do. And as you see, they, they use a few transistors here. If you want to go even more crazy, then just substitute this with vacuum tube. But if you plop here four vacuum tubes, that means adding an extra chassis because you need all the filament power and the high voltage uh, supply for that as well. So, of course, they had to draw the limit at maybe like two, three or four or five chassis uh, because they did not want to go the full way if you want to make your deck and your CD system entirely uh, vacuum tube based. Like the, the full shebang, like like the total full extra version, then uh, uh, Lou he has made uh, that uh, into reality, and and he has a totally dream uh, CD system, and uh, he shared uh, it with me, and is is just totally mind blowing. So if you think that this is over the top. Well, uh, th these are kind of like baby steps compared to uh, what he did. Um, but still, it is something that is uh, even going to this length is uh, totally just about completely unheard in the world of uh, uh, mainstream audio. And, and I'm just totally amazed that there is a company out there, it exists, who, who really took the pains, took the care to, uh, to travel this amazing road. And 
I have not heard their deck, but it 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 must be uh, truly something quite special, and. Uh, I don't know about the qualities like resolution, etc. How it compares to other decks, I don't know. Don't ask me. Never heard it. But based on the design layout, what they did, it it probably uh, kicks the bucket in in tonality. I mean, kicks the uh, competition's bucket uh, like really um, quite well. So uh, thank you. Davis, thank you, Nick, for, for your uh, awesome uh, comment and uh, um, just continue your thought experiments. And uh, uh, so here on my uh, deck, why did I use a combination of uh, blue tech and wood if I'm saying that the best way is, use, is to go full wood? Because as you noticed, uh, but where I put the wood was on the chassis material and I also put a uh, wooden piece under the PCB just to uh, lighten up the PCB resonances. And uh, and where I put the blue tech, I put the blue tech on the IC. So you see here they didn't put anything on the IC, so we could or they could improve that. Uh, by uh, by gluing a piece of wood or adding a piece of blue tech because if you glue in a piece of wood there or you cover the whole thing with blue tech then both of these materials especially blue tech they they uh, prevent the heat to be released from uh, from your IC and if the heat builds up it kills the IC so what can you do to do that so put a piece of copper tape on your IC, on your transistor, make sure not to short out any of the legs, and then on the, the copper tape improves the heat conductivity away. You can leave the edge a little bit like uh, overreaching uh, to conduct away the heat, and then onto the center you can glue in uh, onto the copper tape a piece of wood or, or put uh, a piece of blue tech. I use the blue tech because the blue tech acted both as a dampener and it also acted as the base for the crystal to sit on. And I put uh, the rutilated quartz crystals there and, and that's not because uh, uh, I'm a new age guy, but it's because uh, quartz crystals are uh, are employed by electronics. It's, it's not something new, not something weird, not something alien. Every engineer knows about them, knows about piezoelectric effects. It, it's not voodoo, it's hardcore science. Uh, and basically, when you have it, it's really important to use on the ICs because the ICs has, uh, have a bunch of uh, transistors inside. They are pretty sensitive to uh, electromagnetic interference. They have very low currents, very low signals running there. And if you prevent uh, neighboring electro, uh, electromagnetic fields from wreaking havoc inside your IC, they will reward you immensely. So, thank you again, and I hope I give ideas for everyone, and just make sure that the heat considerations are really important. That was another consideration with my deck. I mean, with my CD player, the, the experiment I did with adding that much blue tech on it, that the unit just overheated like crazy because the the vast amounts of blue tech prevented the heat to escape from the unit. So so that's why our technology would not work like that. We would need truly alien technology to <laughs> cover it in organic matter, uh, in a technology that does not generate as much heat as our current electronics does. So thank you. Please like, subscribe. Bye bye.